I'm just here feeding my boys. It's currently around 5 a.m. I'm just going to slip them their dinner, let them finish them off before hopping in my horse box to go pick up JJ because today we are attempting our second horse of the year show qualifier in the heavyweight cobs and this will also be our biggest cob class to date with there being 11 heavyweight cobs in the class or catalogued to go into the class. So very exciting day ahead of us and his class is at 8am in the Grand Ring. It's one of the first classes going on. So I'm going to head to his yard, box him up and I'll meet you guys at the Royal Norfolk Show. Scott here, and look at the people. These are just stewards and helpers flooding into the showground and it's only 7 a.m. I'm nearly dressed, JJ's nearly ready. We've literally got here with just enough time to get his tack on and get on really, because there's always loads of show traffic. But we did plan in advance and we gave it a good hour to get here. And it's only like a 40 minute trip and it's literally taken a good hour because of all the show traffic. But breathe Charlotte, we are nearly there. Here's the second class in, so I've got about 10, 15 minutes and I'm just gonna put my jacket on, give him the bear prep, take him up there, give him some warm up and then sort of top it up. This horse of the year show. Second, Justine Armstrong Small. Justine and Hortons Magnificate. Hortons Magnificate in second. Third, Ollie Hurd and Sophia Scott, Skyler Shotgun. Another with a third time out. 215. Fourth, 214. Nicholas Owens at Jambalaya, the second. One of Notts County Reserve Champion at the Harts County Show in fifth place. 208. Annie Booty's Aero, third at Suffolk County. And in sixth place, 213, Tom Page's Wolf. And seventh, it is Jason Taylor's uh, The Jungle VIP. So, two qualifiers, two now qualified for that all important ticket at the Horse of the Year show at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham in October. So, there is the winner of the heavyweight. JJ have just completed the Hoy's heavyweight cob class and we came fourth and I was really really happy with that there were about nine people in it I think because um, a couple didn't turn up but he went beautifully the ride judge commented to say he gave the most stunning ride confirmation judge said he's beautiful because he's old school with lots of bone really liked him both of them just said he'd like him to carry a little less condition which we're working on with our fitness 
and the placings were three top lovely horses. I stood next to Oliver Hood, who is a famous producer renowned for his cobs. So he stood next to me third, and then there was a lovely bay with four white socks as second, and then a gentleman who is a judge, I believe, with a grey as first. And I was very happy in a huge class. I, like I said, I think there was eight in it, but I'll have to rewatch the footage and have a count up. But absolutely, really happy with that. Yes, it would have been lovely to get our hoist ticket, but I would rather go in a big class like that with lots of competition and do really well. And actually, the horse that beat him at the Suffolk show was down the bottom of the line. I think it was sixth or seventh. So it just shows you that under a different judge, different day, anything can happen. So really happy with that. And he kept his cool in the grand ring and he was a really good boy. So I am really, really pleased with him today. Good Me boy, JJ. JJ have now finished for the day. JJ's chilling with his floppy lip. And I'm just gonna go have a little look at the photographs and have a wander around the showground to see what the wonderful Royal Norfolk has to offer. Have a carriage driving class, just preparing to go in the ring. And how stunning are these carriages and horses. It must have taken hours to clean all that tack and the cart and the pony. I just love looking at the cart. I love the yellow one. It's really beautiful. shop of all time that's always at Equifest and it's just full of sale items and of course I love a bargain so we'll have a good hunt around in here Are these working hunter jumps you might recognize this one from Houghton in the hunt relay this was one of the jumps we did there that Finley flew over somehow I don't think he would like this one as much um, and there was also this triangle he jumped that in the inter hunt relay race and he also jumped the planks and he did this in his working hunter course at Houghton International. So I thought I'd just, oh, and the carrots, the famous carrots. Um, they've got a face on them. If you remember from the vlog, there we go. Brilliant jumps, aren't they? And they're from Jumps To Go. We've got plenty of tractors at the show. This is the Thurlow Nun stand. And there's also a massive Ben Burgess John Deere stand, which is my partner's company he is around this show somewhere but he's probably talking about tractors and machinery whilst I'm more interested in the ponies it's now like 11 o'clock and we haven't actually had any breakfast yet so I thought we'd go in the food hall and do a little tour of the food a custard king a ham and cheese pastry and Mum's having some carrot cake too because these cakes look delicious so we've got pickles and jam farms the potatoes literally just up the road from us they're literally just around the corner chile drum JJ was big. How gorgeous is this ball? He's absolutely stunning. Look how well behaved he's been. Nearly. It was a heifer class for heifers born January to March. Gorgeous. Hey, darling. Championships. As a person of Robin Roberts is judging our commercial campaign. 
more than meat trade. Supply in huge numbers through livestock markets through the region over the years. There's another one. Oh, hello! Oh my god, they're so cute! Hello. So, I've just been and done a little bit of shopping around the equine area. It's all very close to the equine rings, so I can have a good shop around there without going too far. And I started off by buying this beautiful photo of me and JJ of today. He had his ears forward and it was a lovely background and we just had to have it. And you've always got to have a photo when you go to these shows to create such lovely memories that you'll never forget. Um, next, we've got some Premier Performance cookies, which are for my ponies, not for JJ. And I have got the Mint Calming cookies. These are for Finley when he does evening performances because he gets very excited. And then we've also got some Mint energy cookies and these are for Will when we do work in Hunter and he might need a little bit more of a boost. Um, if you sort of follow me and know what I'm feeding, my horses just have a balancer all year round. When I do quite a lot of shows or have a show where Will's got to work quite hard, I give him some turbo. But this is like you can just feed it out of your hand and have it in your show basket. So if you're warming up and think, oh, he feels a bit flat, just pop him one of them. So we've got one of each to try for the boys. We mustn't get it the wrong way around and give Will the karma and Finley the energy cookies. Okay, um, next we have got some e-gloves, which I saw on Katie Lewis 100's vlog, which I'll pop her little Instagram on here and these are just i bought the general riding gloves they're kind of like a leather feel but they're not leather even though they do do like leather ones ah, fly. Um, and what's brilliant about the e-gloves is you can actually use them whilst on your phone so at the minute when i go for hacks and say mum calls me or someone calls me i have to take my gloves off to answer it i mean i try not answer the phone when i'm riding but Sometimes you can't help it if you've got an emergency going on. So I've got the e-gloves to try and see if I can use my phone whilst I'm riding. Yeah, and these are just the black and grey, but these are the new model. Should be in there. And I wear a size small, and my hands are usually a seven in most, most glove sizes. So we've got those. And lastly, you're, you're gonna laugh at this one. We have, a fly rug from the bargain shop. I don't actually know what the shop is called that I always go to at the festival. They were here today. It's just full of sale items. If you love toggy clothing, literally tons of it. It's all like Outlet or last season, but it's dirt cheap. So I have got Will a Gallup fly rug because as you know, Will loves to shred rugs for fun. So I really begrudge spending a lot of money on a fly rug. So this Gallup fly rug was £20, so I can't really go wrong. It's got a belly flap, all the bits a fly rug should have. I've gone for a five foot nine because Will's been wearing some six foot, but they're sort of baggy around his front. So I'm gonna see how a five foot nine fits him. And hopefully it might last more than a week because last week he went through two fly rugs, which is a joke. But I have to have them on because we do have a lot of flies around us. And he does need that. And JJ has untied himself and he's just stuffing into his second haylage net off today. Honestly, I mean, he is on quite a diet at home and a fitness regime, but 
it's a show day. He can have what he wants, just like I have what I want on a show day. Have a bit of sugar. But he's not stopped eating, have you? But he's, he's amazing. So, I'm going to leave today's vlog there. But I will see all of you guys tomorrow for a very exciting class. So welcome to day two of the Royal Norfolk Show. And as you can see from the troublesome pony behind me, ah, yes, it's my hair, it's not food. Um, we're here with Will today. I'm not gonna give away what class I'm doing yet. It's only 8 a.m. and we're not on till gone 12. But due to the traffic, which is always horrific getting into the show, you have to get here really, really early. Otherwise your horse is just gonna sit there in a standstill traffic. So we've got here early and I thought I'm just gonna have some coffee and then we will go for a walk around the showground first. And then I will talk about my secretive adventure class today. It's not that exciting, but. <laughs> On, Ruby. to the layout of Houghton with the jumps. farmer stand as I used to be a young farmer too and this is all competitions from Norfolk young farmers which is split into county areas I used to be Carrington however that is non-existent anymore but highly recommend if you've got a young person looking to meet new friends and do crazy things this is the place to go it's bits of Stowbridge which is my local There's so many here, all in show. And I, I mean, I've, I've not really had much experience with goats, but they're all sort of jumping up for cuddles. And they are the cutest. It's making me really want one. <laughs>
lovely walk around the showground and I've come back to babysit and I thought I would talk you through this afternoon's class. Concourse d'Elegance is a period costume class for equestrians. You can wear any sort of period costume that would have been rid ridden in around, usually the earliest people sort of go as 15th century, some go sort of Tudor times, and then the, the latest period you can do is 1950s. So an outfit that an equestrian would have worn in that time frame. Most people choose sort of top hats and lavish dresses, sort of Victorian style outfits, but we have decided to make something new. So I'm a bit of a geek and I have been Googling bits of history, trying to find some inspiration for a new outfit. And I come across lots of photos of the Queen because obviously this year it's been her platinum jubilee. And I found an outfit of the Queen, a photograph outfit of her, which I will place in here in a minute of her doing the Trooping of the Colours Parade in 1947. And it was her father's 50th birthday and she was just a princess then. And she wore a military style side saddle costume for the parade. And we've literally tried to replicate it the best we can for our Concourse d'Elegance class. people <laughs> so we were just walking around and trying to get will to relax and not spook at anything because there's quite a lot going on and it was really cool in this class because literally everybody was wearing a different color outfit i don't think anyone was wearing anything similar and literally so many different types of pony you can see there's a halflinger in front of me there was a fell i think that was a frisian type that's just walking past the camera there was like a spanish horse behind me or portuguese and that was really cool and she'd done his mane like all in a spanish style which was really smart a lot of thought and effort go into these outfits so it's just a really cool class and there's so much behind it it's not just about the outfit so then we all got pulled in, which, I mean, there were so many of us, and we had to come forward and do a little show. It just happened that where I was stood was the first one to go. So I was like, okay, let's go. And I was just really hoping that Will would stand still because he was quite antsy. And at the last show, he didn't really want to stand still. But luckily there was actually some horses schooling behind the hedge. And he was so busy looking at them that he mm -hmm. stood still for me. 
So the judge comes forward and she just asks a little bit about the outfit and the history of the outfit. To hear I was telling her that it was replicated on an outfit I saw the Queen wearing in 1947 for the Trooping of the Colours and that my mum actually made the skirt and that the jacket was like a World War II jacket. And yeah, just telling her about the outfit and why I chose it and what I liked about it. And then she looks round and sort of inspects the stitching, the style and attention to detail of the outfit. So here she is and she asked about the skirt and she's just checking that it's all weighted properly and how it's made. So that was pretty cool that she actually checked that. And then she just asked me to do a really short show because it was such a large class and you do not have to canter. It's completely optional and you don't get marked down for this. So I thought I would just walk and trot because sometimes when I canter wheel side saddle, he gets a bit yeehaw and the ring wasn't the easiest to ride on. It's sort of all downhill and the ground wasn't fantastic. So I thought keep it short and sweet and then hopefully he won't do any acrobatics in his performance. So I just walked in a straight line so she could see the outfit from behind and my hair and that we were all neat and tidy. And then I thought on the corner, I would just pick up Trot and Trot like a little bit on each rein. And as you can see, he just wants to canter and I'm like, well, no. <laughs> he loves his workers and he, canter is his favorite, but yeah, sometimes it gets a bit acrobatic. So I just sort of trot across the diagonal so she could see the outfit from both sides and have a little trot on the other rein. I was sort of just making this up as I went along. I didn't think that much about it. And as you can see, Will just wants to canter, but I did not. So I just kept it short and sweet and literally just did a little bit of trot. And he's so bouncy, I'm just sort of trying <coughs> to hold it all together. Um, and I thought I'd just have a little walk here and then end with a nice halt. My halt was a bit messy because I halted him and then it didn't feel square, even though it was actually spot on. <laughs> um, and then I thought I would do like a regimented salute rather than a normal salute. Um, Lady Tyra Raza for her judging here. And in first place, number 234, it's Miss Katie Lewis on Dublin Lass. In second place, number 232, Miss Virginia Draper on Diamante Del Rey. In third place, number 230, Mrs. Coralie, Coralie Chung. No, sorry, rider is Binky Chung, Chung on Riversdale Papago. In fourth place, number 228, it's Caroline Eagle on Mr. Neil Andrews's Walton Express. In fifth place, it's number 231, Miss Charlotte Cooper on her Lad of Derry Gimbler. In sixth place, number 236, Miss Beverly Pooley on Scarf. Dublin last. We have just finished our concourse de elegance in our new period costume outfit. And yeah, it went really well. I was really happy with our placing and Will could have behaved a bit better, but he wasn't on his complete worst behaviour. He stood still for the judge, which was the main thing. He just was a bit like eyes on stalks. And when we were trotting around, the hunt decided to come past in the background and that sort of revved him up just a little bit. And then the Shire horses and things were behind us when we were lined up and he could hear the like harnesses jingling. So he was just a bit like, ooh bit antsy pantsy and he found it a bit boring because the class went on for ages and we stood there for quite a while but I had the best time and I really enjoyed dressing up and seeing all the wonderful outfits and it was just lovely to have such a big class with a wide variety of ages and ponies so really really fun you've time. enjoyed this week's Royal Norfolk vlog we've had the best two days and really enjoyed ourselves. And I hope you've enjoyed it too. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.